Welcome to the Mommy Zen Podcast with Mary Ann Clyde. Hi, this is Mary Ann Clyde, and welcome to another episode of the Mommy Zen Podcast. Today I want to talk about helping our kids survive in a faceless society. And our affirmation is, I am valuable and contribute positively to my environment. We hear the tragic story of a young lady only 12 years old who commits suicide after being relentlessly bullied. Then we hear of a shooting in Nevada at another school where it seems like the shooter, another 12-year-old, has been a victim of bullying. What's a parent to do? We're tempted to feel helpless or overreact and, and become overprotective or overly critical or take away computers and iPhones forever. We condemn and look for someone to blame or some legislation to pass or something to ban. But we need not fear. We should not teach our kids to fear. We need to be wise and teach our kids to be wise. We need to teach restraint and self-respect and personal empowerment. Yes, these incidents are tragic and heartbreaking and frightening, but we can't give in to the fear and the heartache and let it disempower us or cause us to become angry and hateful. If we do these things, our kids become more victimized, more helpless, and more disempowered. So, what can we do? We can pay attention. We can monitor our kids' mobile devices. Food, clothing, shelter, these are needs. A mobile phone, that's a privilege. A computer, that's a privilege. Do they need devices for school? Maybe but they don't need to be unmonitored. Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, texting, and the rest are social media tools that keep your kids connected. And, and if used properly and respectfully, they're fun and informative and useful. But like everything else, they have good uses and bad uses. You teach your kids not to chew with their mouths open. You teach your kids not to say nasty things to the neighbor kids, to say please and thank you when they want something or receive a gift, because some of these things are considered good manners, but they don't come out the gate knowing these things. You have to teach them, and you monitor your kids and commend them for having learned well. We work hard as parents to make sure our kids feel loved and accepted. We can't leave that task to anyone else. Home needs to be a safe place where things are discussed without judgment. We teach, we listen, we encourage, we correct. But more than that, we set an example for our kids of the type of behavior we want them to exhibit. We stay informed. We talk to our kids at home about social issues. We help them problem solve. We help them find solutions that make sense to them. We listen. We ask for their input. We respect them. We teach them empathy so they understand how it might feel to be in someone else's shoes. We teach them to stand up for what is right, what is true and what is kind. We teach them to step in when they can make a difference and say something or do something. We teach them that their words have power and their actions matter. We teach them to stand up for vulnerable people, to contribute to society where they can. We teach them to be productive and creative, and we teach them to use their minds and think things through. If we're too busy or too tired or too lazy to have dinner together, to have family outings, to spend one-on-one -on -one time with our kids, they'll find those that will spend time with them. And more than likely, they'll be spending time with other kids whose parents are too tired, too busy, or too lazy to spend time with them. And they'll spend time with other kids that have been left to fend for themselves. They'll find their entire social life behind a screen, a name, or a Twitter label. They'll feel empowered because there's no accountability. When you say something over social media, you don't have the benefit of seeing someone's face when they first read your post. You're saved from that little check in your spirit that says you hurt someone's feelings. You're protected from the consequences of feeling bad because you made some globalized comment about a certain person or a group of people that was really rather tactless or offensive. And because you didn't have to feel bad, and were immediately rewarded with likes and comments goading from others who have also thought those same thoughts. You feel stronger in a crowd and you don't really have to think things through because your comment was rewarded instantly with feedback and that makes you feel loved. 
So you've broken through one societal taboo and been rewarded for it. So it's that much easier to do it the next time and the next time. And we wonder how our own sweet children could ever become bullies. We need to limit time on social media and create a schedule for face-to-face -face time. We need to teach compassion and personal responsibility. Technology is good. It has so many fabulous uses for good and for creativity. But like anything else, if not taught properly or used properly or responsibly, in the wrong hands it can be deadly. It's not the technology it's bad, it's our lack of responsibility as parents. Yes, our kids know more about it than we do. Even three-year-olds know how to use it. They know how to play games and they're comfortable with it. We can begin to feel helpless and overrun by it all. But don't be discouraged, parents. Use what you do know. You do know the value of face time. You do know the value of compassion and empathy. You do know the reward of creativity, and you do know the value of a good diet and exercise. You do know the value of family time and hard work. Teach your kids these things. Teach them personal responsibility and civility by your own actions. Teach your kids how to value themselves by taking time and listening. Be with them. Teach your kids to have stimulating, non-judgmental discussions by having them at home. Hug them, kiss them, spend time with them, and let them help with the chores. And if there's time left over, let them say hi to their friends on Facebook. You have more power and control than you think. Use it. So remember our affirmation for today, I am valuable and contribute positively to my environment. This is Mary Ann Clyde for the Mommy's End Podcast. See you next week. Thanks for listening to the Mommy's Zen Podcast. For nuggets of encouragement and strength throughout your day, follow Mary Ann on Twitter at mommy underscore zen and Facebook at facebook.com slash mommy just breathe. Also, you can join our mailing list, leave comments, or ask questions by visiting mommy-zen.com.